atoms. The building blocks of everything around you. That atoms are extremely small probably isn't something I have to tell you. But how small exactly are they? That's where things get a bit more interesting, because that's actually quite difficult to answer visually. Now of course I could tell you that a carbon atom has a diameter of only 1.4 times 10 to the power of minus 7 millimeters, but that would hardly help you to visualize the scale of atoms. Such a value is simply too abstract. Similarly, I could say that one cubic meter of diamond would contain about 1.75 times 10 to the power of 29 atoms, but that too wouldn't necessarily bring us any closer to a clear picture of how small atoms really are. To illustrate the scale of atoms properly, we have to bring it in a context that is still somewhat visualizable. And that's exactly what we will be attempting to do today. Because the tiny dimensions we are talking about make this not at all easy, we will explore three different approaches at once, so that by the end, hopefully everyone has a better understanding of how small atoms really are. Before we begin, let's quickly establish how big a millimeter is for our American audience, because inches are way too big for the task at hand. If we take a look at this ruler, then this is an inch, and this is a millimeter. So a millimeter is almost exactly 1 25th of an inch, or based on this ruler, 2 thirds of 1 16th. So when I say something like 1 5th of a millimeter, then that's 1 5th of this blue area. Great, let's begin. One of the smallest things visible to the naked eye is a human hair. This makes it a perfect starting point. On the one hand, it is so small that the numbers don't instantly explode into absurdity, but on the other hand, everybody should have a clear understanding of its dimensions. Now of course, hairs vary in thickness, but your typical head hair is about one tenth of a millimeter thick. Atoms also don't have a uniform scale. Their size varies depending on the element, the chemical environment, and even how they are arranged. Our model of the atom simply is just that, a model. As much as we like atoms to be perfectly defined marbles, in reality it's not that simple. However, to make this video we have to use some figure. For carbon atom, the third most common atom in our body, 140 picometers is I think a fair value. That's roughly 1 7 millionth of a millimeter. That means a human hair is, on average, as thick as a strand of 700,000 carbon atoms. Which showcases quite well just how small atoms must be. But 700,002 isn't necessarily a conceivable number, especially on the inside of a human hair. So what if we scaled up each of these atoms, but only to the point that each atom itself has the diameter of a human hair, and would therefore barely be visible to the naked eye? If we did that, the hair would be an astonishing 70 meters or 230 feet thick, almost as tall as the Big Ben in London. But these 700,000 atoms of course only form a one-dimensional string, to fully appreciate how numerous and therefore small atoms are, we have to explore all three dimensions. So let's continue with an area. What if we covered the cross section of a hair with a layer of carbon atoms? That's calculated easy enough. If we plug the radius of 350,000 atoms in the formula for the area of a circle, we get an area of 390 billion atoms. Roughly that many carbon atoms fit on the cross section of a hair. Why is this number important? As mentioned earlier, objects 0.1 mm wide, so the width of a human hair, are just distinguishable by good eyes. That means the cross section of a human hair is the smallest point you can still make out with your own eyes, and thus an area of 390 billion carbon atoms is the smallest area of atoms visible to the naked eye, at least theoretically. Because while a monolayer of carbon atoms does absorb about 2-3% of white light, making it ever so slightly opaque, such a small dot would probably still be too transparent to be distinguishable without a few more layers of atoms below it. Still, if you put the end of a cut hair between your fingers and press your fingers together so that only the very tip peeks out, on that tiny point would fit roughly 390 billion carbon atoms, an inconceivably large number. To put this number into perspective, let's go back to our scale up from earlier. But this time picture it as a giant 70 meter or 230 feet thick paintbrush, made from human hair tightly packed together with no room in between. Humans have around 100,000 hairs on their head, so for a paintbrush that size you would need to shear the heads of around 4 million people. If each of these hairs would represent one atom, then that's how many carbon atoms would fit on the tip of one of your hairs. And this is just a single layer of atoms. There's still one dimension left to explore. And that's where the numbers really become mind-bogglingly large. But for that task, we should probably switch to an object that is a little easier to see in detail. Which brings us to our second approach. This time, let's use a grain of sand. 
The average grain of sand is about half a millimeter big, so about five times the diameter of a hair. Technically speaking, sand isn't made up of a particular material, as it is only defined by the size of its particles. It is finer than gravel, but coarser than silt. Typically, however, sand is of course composed of silicon dioxide, so quartz. Our grain of sand would weigh about 200 micrograms. Using the molar mass of silicon dioxide, we can calculate that there are around 10 to the power of 22 molecules in a gram of sand. Since each molecule of silicon dioxide contains 3 atoms, this amounts to 6 times 10 to the power of 18 or 6 quintillion atoms in our grain of sand. Using our trick from earlier and scaling up each of these atoms to the size of a grain of sand, our grain would be roughly 1100 meters or 3600 feet tall, 3 times as tall as the Empire State Building. Or to put it differently, if you'd cover an area of 750 square kilometers, roughly the size of New York City, with a layer of sand up to your belly button, you would have about as many grains of sand in that layer as there are atoms in a single grain. Granted, that's not nearly as many atoms as there are grains of sand on the entire planet, as some trivia sites claim, but it's still an absurdly large number that gives us a good understanding of how small atoms really are. The final approach we want to explore is arguably the most abstract one, but it's also the most fun one. How many atoms are in your body? Given that a single grain of sand already contains quintillions of atoms, it doesn't really make sense to try to visualize the number in a conventional way. So instead let's try something a little different. What if we made a human sausage? What if we put a human, obviously a very bad one like a murderer or a lawyer, through a meat grinder and rolled him out thinner and thinner and thinner? How long could that sausage get? How long could a single human theoretically get? The first step would be to roll them out so thinly that we end up with a string of individual cells. How long would such a human cell thread be? How many cells there are in a human body can of course only be estimated, and even that is harder than it seems. For a start, the cells in our body differ vastly in size. Red blood cells, for instance, are teeny tiny, only 1 150th of a millimeter wide. Sperm cells, the smallest cells in our body, are even smaller. On the other side of the spectrum, we have fat cells, for instance, with a volume roughly 20,000 times larger. The largest cells, the female X cells, are so large they are even visible to the naked eye. On top of that, the different cells also vary significantly in density. All this makes an accurate estimation of the amount of cells in our body quite challenging. By dividing the body into its individual organs and parts, and those again into their cell types, scientists in 2013 for the first time made an attempt at a more accurate estimation. Their result? The body of an average human, not including the countless bacteria and microbes that live within us, contains roughly 37 trillion cells. If we assume that an average cell has a diameter of 1 50th of a millimeter, then a string of all those cells would have a length of 740,000 kilometers, 460,000 miles, and would reach 18 times around the world. Now let's break each of these cells down into its individual atoms. How long would the human body then be? Earlier we learned that you could fit 390 billion atoms on the tip of a hair. So, in simplified terms, you could say that each hair consists, similar to a steel cable, of 390 billion strands of atoms. If you put them one behind the other, the strands of a 13 cm 5 inch hair would already be enough to cover the distance from Earth to Mars. But we obviously can't stop here. An average human weighs about 75 kilos, or 165 pounds. If we subtract 5 kilos of microbes and food or whatever's left of it, we end up with 70 kilos or 155 pounds of meat, fat, blood and bones. Since life on Earth is carbon based and 65% of our body is made up of water, it shouldn't come as a surprise that hydrogen, oxygen and carbon are the three most common elements in our body. In fact, they make up 99% of all the atoms we are made of. So let's just leave out the other 1%. Just under two thirds of that is hydrogen, one fourth oxygen and one tenth carbon. Using the atomic mass of these elements we can estimate that 70 kilos of human consists of roughly 7 octillion atoms. That's a 7 with 27 zeros. How large is that number? Let's put it that way. If we cover the entire planet, land and water combined, with a mat made of human hair sticking up from the ground, we would still need to duplicate the planet 140,000 times to get to 7 octillion hairs. That many atoms are in your body. Would you line them up in a row, the resulting string of atoms would be 300 trillion kilometers long. That's roughly 10 parsecs or 32 light years. That would make a single human long enough to stretch from Earth to the Sun and back 1 million times 
or from the Sun to the nearest star Proxima Centauri and back, four times. This is only possible because the atoms that we and all the other ordinary matter in our universe are made of are so incredibly small. And hopefully after these 10 minutes of theoretical shenanigans, you now have a little better understanding of how small exactly. <laughs>